You're studying all wrong. Hi friends and welcome back to the channel. For those of you who are new here, my name is Christina. I am a fifth year medical student. I share tips and tricks on everything medical student related from the academic side of things all the way to lifestyle and everything in between. If that interests you, please feel free to join the family and subscribe below. In today's video, we'll be discussing effective study strategies for medical students. I personally use every single one of these study strategies and they've helped me immensely in my time at medical school, as well as in my undergraduate when I was studying a DSC medical science. As you know, medical school can be very overwhelming with the amount of work that we need to do, as well as the amount of content that we need to learn. So having effective study strategies in place makes the world of difference when it comes to revising and retaining the information. With these few techniques, you can maximize your time and study more efficiently. So let's get into the video. Number one is to create a study plan. Now this might seem high schoolish, but it's so important to be able to map out exactly what you need to study so that you're not running between subject to subject, especially in your undergraduate years when you have multiple subjects happening at the same time, it can be very overwhelming to study without a study plan. So what I like to do is I start by assessing my workload and seeing what needs to be studied first. For example, what tests do I have coming up? What assignments do I have coming up? And then I work backwards from that. Then you want to take your individual subjects and break them down into the topics that are coming up. I write this down on a list and I put it into my Google Calendar or into Notion and I create an effective study plan from that. Having a study plan means that every day when you wake up, you know exactly what you need to re revise for when and it just takes all that anxiety and pressure off studying. Number two is to use active learning. Stop reading the textbook. Stop sitting there and highlighting all of the information. It's not going into your brain. You have very limited time in medical school, so you need to make the most out of your time that you have. Passive learning has been proven by multiple studies that it is not effective and all it does is it just makes us feel better that we are studying but we're actually not retaining any of that information. So in order to maximize the amount you're learning in the shortest amount of time, we want to use active recall. What do active learning methods look like? That looks like using flashcards such as Anki or Quizlet, as well as question banks. Also helpful to summarize the concepts in your own words. So for example, if you're reading a topic, let's say rheumatoid arthritis, if you are able to teach that subject back to yourself, then you know the content in and out. So doing things such as drawing diagrams, making mind maps, flashcards, question banks, and teaching the subject back to yourself are all proven forms of active recall and active learning. Find which one works best for you. You don't necessarily need to do all of them. I personally stick to flashcards as well as question banks. And then when I'm in a study group, I like teaching my friends. I will link down below a few videos on active recall. I personally love Ali Abdul's videos as I find that they are the most beneficial to me. Number three is to use practice questions. Practice makes perfect. <laughs> Remember that. Practice questions are a great way to actively test your knowledge and identify areas that you're struggling in. For example, I use the osmosis question bank, but you can use things such as QuizMed. I know PassMed is a very big popular one. Whatever question bank works for you. Your school might also have past papers that you could also use. Questions are so important because it helps us actively recall the information and then apply it in a clinical matter. So we're using our critical thinking skills, which is something that we're going to be doing every single day as a doctor. It's pretty useless having all of this information in your head, but not being able to apply it. So yes, you might know what rheumatoid arthritis is, but do you know how it presents in a patient? Do you know how to treat said patients? This is all important and a skill that we have to develop over time. So while we're not in the hospital developing the skill, use practice questions in the meantime. However, a caveat is not a lot of students use practice questions correctly. They just go through the question banks again and again and again, and they don't identify when they make a mistake and why they've made that mistake. It's important to crit critically analyze where you went wrong and then teach yourself the subject matter so that you don't get the question wrong again. For example, let's say you have the treatment for TB. So we all know that it's the right drug, profampicin, isomyazide, ethambutyl, et cetera, et cetera. Now let's say you chose a different treatment. You need to then go and evaluate, okay, why did I choose that treatment? 
why was I thinking of that treatment? And how do I remember the treatment for TV should be these four drugs instead? So that is very important. Don't just passively do the question banks. You want to actively be learning while doing your question banks. Number four, which is probably the most important tip of all, is remember to take breaks. Medical school burnout is so real. We are constantly being pressured academically. We wake up, we go to uni, we come back, we either go to the hospitals or we have to study and then repeat the cycle. It's really important to factor in time to de-stress and let your brain relax. When it comes to studying, it is essential to take breaks within your study time. Now, there are two differing opinions in this. One is using the Pomodoro technique where you study for 25 minutes at a time and then taking a five minute break. This is very effective to most medical students as they feel like they can reduce their content learning into a smaller bite size. However, there's another school of thought that thinks that this interrupts your flow state, which is where basically it takes a certain amount of time for you to get into a task. And then once you're in that task, when you disrupt yourself, it's harder to get back into that task. So you need to decide if you're the type of person who needs regular breaks or if once you're in your flow state, you are happy to sit within that flow state. But then just make sure that you're still scheduling in a break, maybe every hour to two hours, just so that you can get up, stretch your legs, give your brain a little bit of a rest. Number five is collaborating with your peers. Say it with me. Medical school and medicine is a teamwork sport. We are never going to be working on our own when we are in the medical field. So why do we apply that to medical school? Teamwork makes the dream work. <laughs> Let's remember that. You can't and won't get through all the information that you need to on your own in medical school. You need to establish a great supportive network of friends where you can all help each other in the various aspects of medical school. Let's say you have a group of friends who are all like-minded. You all have the same sort of study commitments, etc., etc. What you can do is you can share the workload. For example, some students will be in charge of making the summaries, others will be in charge of helping when there's assignments, some will help with teaching the subjects back to you. It's so important to collaborate and bounce off ideas with our fellow peers because that's what it's going to look like in the real world. Most of the time, medicine is working within a multidisciplinary team made up of people from all aspects of the medical field. So get used to working with each other. That old school energy of wanting to be the best in medical school and constantly dragging down your other peers or feeding them false information so that you do better on the test is gone. It doesn't exist anymore. It's 2023. We don't do that anymore. We support each other. So make sure you're being a good team player and helping your friends and they will in turn help you. Number six is technology is your friend, so use it. Technology can be such a powerful tool for medical students and often it is so underutilized. There are so many apps as well as software that we can use to organize our notes, create flashcards, access a plethora of medical information, as well as test us on our knowledge. Some examples of really good apps are Anki, Osmosis, Quizmed, Medscape, Lipman Learning, the list goes on and on and on. So find the apps that work best for you and support your studying. Using technology to automate your tasks saves so much time when it comes to studying. If you want a full video on the different types of apps as well as technology that I personally use in medical school to help save time and automate my life, then comment down below because I'm pretty sure I use technology in every single step of my study routine and I'd be happy to make that video for you. The last one, which is number seven, Sleep and self-care are important. Remember, there's only one of you. So what good are you going to do if you burn yourself out the first three weeks in medical school? It is so important that we're prioritizing ourselves as well so that we can show up for our classmates and for our patients one day, every single day. There are numerous studies that show that lack of sleep and burnout can have severely negative impacts on your studies and your overall academic health. It's important to aim for at least seven to eight hours of sleep every single day. However, each person is different, so make sure that you're understanding how much sleep you need to function throughout the day. Practicing self-care activities are also really important, whether that's exercising, meditation, seeing your friends and family, or just watching a movie. Make sure that you're factoring these into your study schedule as well as your study routine, because again, and I cannot stress this enough, you are important and looking after yourself is just going to mean that when you sit down to study again, you're way more motivated and you have a refreshed mind ready to absorb all that information. Let's recap. Remember to create a study plan, engage in active learning, take breaks, 
collaborate with peers, use technology, and prioritize sleep and self-care. With these techniques implemented into your study schedule, you'll be well on your way to achieving all the goals and dreams that you want. Comment down below any study techniques or hacks that you have that help you in medical school so that we can share the information with our friends and be the best versions of us. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one, which is the Sunday reset vlog that you've all been asking for. Bye friends.